Oh, hey, it's Wes. And it's time for the 2022, oh my goodness. Hi, Veronica. 2022 studio update. Where's the time gone? Let's get into it. So this is my studio space. And we've had a few questions about it and things have evolved. Not as quickly as planned because, you know, that's, that's life now. Originally, when we first moved into the space, I was supposed to be getting in full tilt to studio shoots and this will be a really, real happening place in here. But I've been pretty slow on that because I don't wanna have, you know, tons of people traveling through my house on a regular basis for reasons. And so I've been slowly building up to it and slowly getting there a little bit by bit. So let's talk about where we are for the West Perry, also known as the Old Coach Studio. Let's do this. Go for a spin. So the first and most important thing that you need to know about the studio is this is a cat named Veronica. She hangs around a lot and sometimes she gives the evil eye to people who are in the studio, but she's so, so cute that they like it anyway. All right, I'm gonna put you down. As you can see, I'm currently sitting on my backdrop. My backdrop comes in three colors at present. I'll get more colors later, but people are rarely interested in other colors. The backdrop is mounted about 11 and a half feet up. It doesn't look that big. I find it's hard to convey the dimensions of this space. And Jason had asked what the actual dimensions are. And this room is essentially a big cube, 14 feet by 14 feet by 14 feet. It's all 14 feet, easy to remember. This backdrop goes a lot of the way to the ceiling. I kind of wish that I had made it a little bit higher up because <clears throat> sometimes it does get in the shot when I'm trying to do something interesting shooting from below. It's not the sort of stuff that most people do, but it's stuff that I find interesting and I should have taken that into account. And also if I get into some ballet photography in here, which I plan on doing, I'll probably be disappointed by the height. I can always move it later. It'll just be a huge pain in the butt. This is just the cheap, newer backdrop system which for the most part is perfectly fine, but the chains that it comes with are made of like the junkiest plastic you could ever imagine. And so I'm gonna replace them with real metal chains at some point. It's just gonna be a little expensive and it's not a huge priority right now. And then over to my left here is the huge window. This is a north facing window. So it doesn't get much direct light through it, which is very convenient because it's just a general diffusion and there's a diffusion fabric or blind over top of it that's just a neutral white. So I can close these neutral gray blinds if I want to absorb light or I can open it if I want this to act as a reflector because my key light's usually right here. And I can use that light or not use it or I can go natural light. I really love this window, it's great. Right up here, you might think that this is for video shooting, this FV150, sometimes there's an SL152 up there. I always use that when I'm having a photo shoot or anything in the studio. I shine this up against the ceiling because the chandelier over here has a terrible white balance. It's very yellow. And even when I tried to put whiter lights in it, it did not work out very well. So they just don't make good light bulbs in that form factor, the tiny chandelier form factor. So I just rely on this light. It's nice, pure white light, and it doesn't create weird casts in my photography, which is annoying. So right up here, I was using the 8600 Pro as my key light, but it was just completely overboard. And I was usually shooting at like one, 128th power. And so now I'm just using the 8300 Pro, still super fast recycles, much lighter to move around, more convenient. Deceptively tiny, but much easier. Got the Leo Fast Softbox, which is still my favorite softbox because it creates a bit of a ring light effect. And I often use it with a grid. And then in the back for the kicker light. I don't always use this, but I just keep it tucked back here. We've got a Godox strip box, big, big five foot strip box with a grid. Got the ADB2 with two 8200s on it. And then I add and subtract other lights at will. Sometimes I have one down here to cast light up. There can be lots of different things, but this is kind of like the base setup that we go with. Now, as you're probably aware, one of my main themes of this year has been fixing ergonomics as I had injured my back and I need to be more aware of that. Speaking of ergonomics, this camera is not ergonomic. Straighten things out. And so I have 
a new desk, new chair, we've got monitors on arms, so let's talk about the office setup. Okay, here we are. So in this setup now, we have the motion gray standing desk. So this can go up and down based on presets that you can assign. I have a dedicated video on that. Supporting my monitors back here is a motion gray double monitor arm system. So the difference between this and like a cheap one that you would get on Amazon is that, as you can hear, they're made of all metal and they're not all that expensive anyway. And by the way, there will be links in the description for anything that we're talking about here in case you want to pick up something like that. And so this allows me to move things around up and down at will. Now the monitor setup here might seem a little bit weird if you're not used to this sort of thing, but this is for studio photo shoots. So this one right here is a vertical monitor specifically for the talent or the subject or the client to look at. Because even though this is just a 21 inch screen, and let me tell you, this is a garbage screen. This is just something that I stole off my photo booth. Eventually I'll get a better screen for this position. It gives me a much larger image for a portrait orientation photo than this 27 inch screen here. So we don't have full color gamut. We don't have high resolution here, but that's not necessary here because this is for displaying unedited photos in the process of being taken. So they're gonna be viewed from about eight feet away by the client and I haven't edited it yet, so the color accuracy isn't that important. I have, however, done what I can and calibrated it with the Spider X Pro, as I have with the main monitor here, so that the colors are as good as they can be, but still not fantastic. <laughs> now, if we want to talk about our main monitor, much more expensive, this is a 27-inch LG monitor. It is the LG 27UP850. And why did I choose this monitor specifically? Well, let me tell you. I wanted a monitor that was a good match for the new M1 Max MacBook Pros. So for that, we want high resolution, so 4K or greater. We want it to be big to replace the old iMac, so it's 27 inch. We need a full color gamut. So this is 95% of the P3 color gamut. I want it to be bright, because in this room I have sunlight. I like this room to not be a dark cave, and I know that you're supposed to edit with a calibrated brightness, but I want this monitor to be able to be bright enough that it's clearly visible to anyone in this space no matter what the ambient light level is. So this is 400 nits brightness, a little brighter than a lot of the standard monitors are, and one key element is that it has USB-C with power delivery. So this one cable here connects to the laptop, that's nothing new, but it delivers up to 96 watts of power. You might be saying, but the 16 inch M1 Max comes with a 140 watt power supply. That's not enough power. Let me tell you, it is. So while editing, doing some heavy lifting on this laptop, I plugged it into a watt meter and found that I rarely used more than 60 watts of power, mostly only 40 watts of power while photo editing. 140 watts, this is designed specifically to overcome the maximum power draw you're going to be using on this laptop while simultaneously fast charging the laptop. And I gotta tell you, I do not like fast charging this laptop. This thing will pound the current into the battery and you've heard me complain about charging batteries faster than you need to at a ridiculous pace so that while your processors are staying cool, the laptop itself is getting super hot. Like right now, this laptop's doing nothing and it's already getting quite warm. That's because it's being charged with the 96 watt adapter. When you plug it into the 140, this thing goes nuts. I really hope that Apple comes up with a firmware update, a software update on this that allows you to turn off fast charging because it is a bit much, let me tell you. So 96 watts is still way more than enough to power this laptop. I had excluded some monitors from my rank, my uh, choices, because they're only 65 watts. That would have been enough too. It just wouldn't have been charging super fast at the same time. So while I'm shooting, I'm shooting tethered. Now, a lot of people just use the tether tools devices. So this is just a plain old USB-C to USB-A cable. I use a USB-A to C adapter to plug it into the computer because aside from tether tools, you can't get a very long USB-C to C cable. So I'm just using an A to C cable because I can get a 10 foot 
super cheap. Again, link down in the description for that. So this is just an anchor cable, nothing special, and I attach it to the desk using an Irwin Quick Grip. What the heck is this? This isn't a photography accessory. You bet it's not, it is a construction accessory. And this is great for hooking almost anything to anything. You might already be familiar with my uh, proclivity for using construction equipment. This is my camera case. Right now it's a bit of a mess, but it keeps things safe. This water resistant hard box, it's got wheels, it's got a handle that comes out. This was $35 because it's for the construction industry and not the photography industry. If it was for the photography industry, it would be $300. That drives me nuts. The extortion that happens in our industry. I'm thinking of replacing my light bag with a golf bag because my light bag is hot garbage and it was expensive. And I'm pretty sure that there are golf bags out there that are much better. If you know about one, let me know down in the comments below. All right, before I go too much further, I want to tell you about something that you aren't going to see much of in this video. And that's something that uh, kind of takes me back to my past. And what past is that? Well, I used to work on fire alarm and security systems. And so security and safety is very important to me. And I think about it a lot. So what do I use in my own house? Yeah, if some people are watching this and thinking, oh, he's got lots of cool stuff in his house. <laughs> Let me tell you, I go completely overboard with security. I have four overlapping fire alarm systems in my house. Yep. I have smart internet connected fire alarms. I have independent but wirelessly connected traditional fire alarms. I have security system integrated fire alarms. And I have specialty carbon monoxide propane detecting alarms. All overlapping each other redundantly in this space because as you have probably heard from me in other videos before, life safety and fire safety is a high priority for me. And similar to that, my security system is also overlapping and redundant. I have smart home security that you know connects through the internet and stuff, but I also have traditional security systems with door sensors and glass break sensors and motion sensors that connects through, actually I think it's just 3G connection, to go to the police station, fire department, and so forth, independent of that. And I also have streaming security cameras that are always watching all around various places in my house. And one of the latest additions to this whole collection is this chair right here. Once again, this chair is from Motion Gray. Why do I like to have things from Motion Gray? Well, number one, they like to work with me, so that's fantastic. Number two, they're a Canadian company. And that's kind of important to me, not just to get from some random seller. I like to work with Canadian companies. I also like to work with Camera Canada in Ontario. Fantastic. So this chair, this isn't their top of the line chair. Why is that? Well, this is in my workplace, this is in my studio. So I don't want something that takes up too much space that looks ungainly. So this chair here matches the desk, kind of matches the cabinetry. It has, plastic armrests, which you might think is a downside, but for me, it's actually a big upside because my old chair turned out to be a chew toy for my cats and they just ate the chair alive. That's unfortunate. This one, there is nothing obvious for them to chew on. So this chair is going to last longer. And something I want to draw your attention to down here is that these aren't normal wheels that you would see on an office chair. You might notice they look more like rollerblade wheels and that is for a reason. These wheels are much slipperier. They rotate more easily. They move around faster. The wheels themselves are made of a softer rubber compound that are less likely to scratch my floor. This is all fantastic because it's quieter, less likely to do damage, easier to move around. It's an upgrade that you can get from Motion Gray and I really like it. And you'll notice that it is very similar to what's going on on my desk as before. This desk is equipped with wheels as well so that I can move this thing around at will and put it wherever I want. And moving right along, we've got my giant IKEA cabinets. They are white, that's on purpose to reduce color casts while doing videography and photography. Eight feet tall, filled with a ton of stuff, mostly organized in uh, boxes, but not entirely organized. Fully functional fireplace, it's a propane fireplace, takes the edge off in the winter and if I'm doing a photo shoot and someone's cold, is a very nice way to stay warm. 
All right, and one question people might have, what are we shooting with? We're still shooting with the same stuff. I have the A9 with the 16 to 35 G Master. And then on here, I've got the A7 III with the 35 1.4. These things have been my workhorses for a long time. And I mostly shoot tethered with this A7 III because it has the USB-C port that is much faster for tethering. And mostly for studio shooting, I generally use the 85 G Master. And if I need a different focal length for a full body shot, I will use still the Sony Zeiss 55 1.8. Still a great lens. It is showing its age a little bit though. In a previous video, you might have noticed that I was planning on upgrading to the Sigma 85 1.4, the new art digital native. I still haven't done that yet, mostly because hasn't been a lot of money in the business right lately, and I don't really want to make a huge transaction on a lens right now. And I don't know, maybe out of sheer laziness and uh, comfort. But if you're buying an 85 1.4 for Sony right now, I would recommend the Sigma over this any day. And that's about it. So thanks for coming for a spin through the studio. I'm hoping that in the coming months, things will be a little bit busier around here. Maybe, you know, that whole COVID life thing will slow down a bit. If not, you know, it is what it is. And I can continue to do the work that I do in here. So if you have any questions about any of this, let me know down in the comments below. And until next time, let's go take some photos.